I'm no stranger to growing small plants in tight spaces, and I'm always looking to push the limits on how small I can go while still pulling off a respectable yield. Sometimes it works out, and sometimes it doesn't. But ever since I've got these ion beam bar lights, I've been trying out even smaller setups, since a pair of these are definitely strong enough to replace a traditional grow light. And today we'll be doing one of these tests in the light box. A light box is a box used for photographing objects, and it's often lined with mylar to help reflect light. So essentially a mini grow tent with no support bars. It also usually comes with some sort of built-in lighting. But these are really weak since they're only meant to provide a soft light. So I'll be taking these out, which leaves me with an empty shell that has a couple of openings on the walls meant for a camera to pass through, which I can work with. And this cube is tiny, with each wall at about one and a half feet wide. So I'm going to have to get creative on how I set everything up. To start, I'll be using one PC fan blowing inwards from the top center down to act as both the intake fan as well as the circulation fan. And since there's a natural opening on the bottom of the light box where the opening flap is, the air will naturally exhaust out through the bottom. With one fan taking care of all the airflow needs, all that's left is the lighting. And with this size, I'm going with an ion beam S11 on the ceiling, and then half of the ion beam S16 on the side walls, so one bar on each side. And because this space is so small, if I ran these at full power, this would most likely be overkill for this space. So I'm going to be running these at half power. And then if I notice that the plant isn't growing fast enough, I'll increase the lighting. For the potting base, I need it to be as low as possible while still taking up as much space as I can. And it turns out this 5 gallon square fabric pot fits perfectly. Then to prevent excess runoff from spilling out, I made this a makeshift catch tray with some panda film and tape. Fill it with some coca coir, add in a quick auto flowering plant from a batch of auto flowers I started from seed, and we're off. This grow is happening concurrently with the IKEA cabinet grow. And because this light box is smaller than the already small IKEA cabinet, I was able to place this on top of it, which gave me the added benefit of warming the bottom of the soil. Because I'm working with Cocoa Coir, which has no nutrients built into it, I'll also be feeding this plant with a hydroponic fertilizer each time I water. The growth started out pretty normal. And of course, one of the first things I did when the plant grew a couple of nodes up was to top it. I gave it a little more time for the bottom stems to grow out a little, and you can see here that both the top two stems and the two below it are now all about the same height, which is a great outcome from topping. Once the four main stems grew out again, I tried out these low stress training clips since the space constraint made it pretty hard to work with plant ties. These bend the stems at 90 degrees and stay in place really well. But being inexperienced with these, I didn't think far enough ahead and realized that you have to remove them before the stem gets too large, or the stem sort of gets stuck inside these clips and it restricts the stem growth. So yeah, uh, I'll get back to this later. I also noticed that even at half the light output, the plant was still growing a little too fast. So I turned everything down to 30% in hopes of slowing down the vegetative growth. And as the stems got longer, I continued to use the clips to bring down the side stems once again. So I have this weird wavy growth. However, at this point, I've already filled up the entire space of the light box, and the plant hasn't even started to flower yet, so I'm getting a little concerned. It's at this point where I also realized my mistake with the clips, as they're really digging into the stems. I was able to peel them off with a little bit of force. And you can see here the damage it's caused the stem. So I don't know if I would recommend using these over something like plant ties because it's just so much easier to work with when you could just tie it on and remove it anytime. With no more options left, I just started cutting back the stem once it would hit the ceiling of the light box. And here you can hear me complain about it the second time I had to do this. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do about this. Like. 
it grew back up to pretty much where it's touching the light. You can see this one, I'm gonna have to cut short no matter what. But they're finally starting to flower. So I might have to still cut off a little bit just so the buds don't grow into the light, like just, just you know, growing around it. Especially these top ones right here. I mean, look at this. That's kind of crazy. But thank God uh, these autos are starting to flower. Because, yeah, I, I'm tired of <laughs> constantly trimming it back down. But yeah, it only got worse from there because it turns out that we were only in the beginning of the flowering stage. So I had to trim this back like three more freaking times before I just threw in the towel. And I've grown multiple seeds from this strain before, which all flowered much quicker than this. So I was hoping this would do the same. But the long vegetative stage really screwed me here. I'm pretty sure if I went with a photo period plant, I could have gotten this to work. I'm just not really sure how well, because there's so little vertical room for the buds to develop that large and it would have been really hard to film the plant while also preventing a light leak once it reached a certain size, hence the use of an autoflower in the first place. So I'm going to scrap this grow and try again later once I figure out how to tackle this better. For now though, I recommend something double the height of this as the smallest option if you want an easier grow experience with a respectable yield. But for now, that's it.